Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. As Conscious Coffee probably finds you with family, opening presents, enjoying brunch or food of some sort, maybe a little bit stressed out from the chaos of, of this morning. If you are celebrating Christmas, that is. Morning, Tamira. I wanted to jump on real quick because I actually have a a Christmasless Christmas and I meaning that I celebrated Christmas yesterday. As everybody knows, I went through a separation with my my kids' dad, my youngest two's dad a couple years ago. So we switch off every year as to who has Christmas, the actual Christmas day. We made a pact that whoever's Christmas holiday, it is that the other person gets Christmas Eve to be their Christmas with the kids and morning April. And, you know, so I had my four-year-old, my six-year-old uh, Monday night. And then yesterday morning we woke up and Santa came early and all that kind of stuff. So stockings were stuffed and I had like 16 people in my house. That's what my family <laughs> consists of with, with, uh, close knit friends and kids and their kids and all that stuff. And we were still missing three babies from our, from, from our pile and everything. But yeah, so the stockings were filled. The house was full of presents. There was so many presents. I'm going to have to, I can't believe it. It was like probably our biggest biggest Christmas ever in this. I was just like, wow, this is what happens when your children grow up and they have significant others and they have children of their own. Like you just get this amazing, crazy, crazy present mess because I'm not a big gift person. I am an experiential person. I'm the person that's going to go and buy the trip and plan out the experience versus filling my house full of stuff. But, um, Christmas was beautiful. It was beautiful. And you know, it's not about the gifts. It isn't. It is truly about those 16 people in my life, you know, that were just, that were just hanging out. And I, I thought to myself yesterday, I was like, you know, there was these moments I was up at 4 a.m. because my six-year-old was so excited. He was convinced, morning Jason, he was convinced that he heard reindeer feet on the ceiling and his, their bedroom is upstairs right above my bedroom. And so he comes downstairs and he had, of course, peeked over the mantle area upstairs over the haunted area and he looks down and he can see the fireplace where Santa puts his presents and we have the Christ child tradition that fills the stockings. So the Chris Kindle, because I grew up um, with... A European flair to my life, my mom being from Germany also. I grew up with the Chris Kindle. So my kids have the Chris Kindle, Christ child, that fills the stockings and Santa brings presents and puts them by the fireplace by their individual little Christmas trees. And then all the family stuff and friends stuff happens in another room with the big Christmas tree and everything. And when they got here on Monday, there was a lot of presents underneath the tree, but then more people brought more presents and all this stuff happened. And so he looks over and he sees his brother's um, gift that he had asked Santa for, which is this great big humongous unicorn and plush unicorn thing. You know, this like gigantic unicorn. He saw that and he saw that the cookies had been eaten and the milk had been consumed. And he was like, oh my God, oh my God. So he comes downstairs and he like jumps in bed where he's like, mom, mom, Santa's already been here. The reindeer woke me up. Oh my goodness. And like that. And he's 4 a.m. And I'm like, oh honey, just snuggle like this. Because I've been, you know, in bed like three hours. You know, Santa went to bed three hours before. He's up. I was like, can we just get to 6 a.m. please? Like this, let's do 6 a.m. And then we can get up and we can do stockings. And maybe some hot cocoa or something. <laughs> like that. And he laid there for two hours. Two hours with just this enthusiasm, this excitement. And he kept waking me up because I would doze off, snuggle up next to him. I'd doze off. And he'd be like, Mom, 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 I see something green by the fireplace out there. I'm like, because he's looking out my bedroom door. And he's like, I see something green by the fireplace. He's like, I think Santa brought me that big stuffed dinosaur that I wanted. It was the big dragon that he wanted. And he was like, I think it's this. I'm like, he's like, I hear, I hear stuff. I hear stuff. He's like, can we go wake up Rowan, his little brother, yet? And I was like, no, honey, it's, it's 5 o'clock. He's like, I'm hungry. I'm this. I'm that. Anything to get himself out there. And I kept going, getting up and going and, you know, doing this stuff and coming back. I was like, no, you stay in bed. I'll go get you this. You stay in bed. 6 o'clock rolled around. And we go out. And he sees all the Santa presents and he sees that the, all the stockings are filled. And he's like, oh my gosh, you know, and he's checking out the cookies and the milk and so excited. And I was like, you have to stay in this living room. Don't go in the front living room. It's, I was like, it's where the big tree is. That's where all that stuff is. And I got in the motorcycles 
Um, <laughs> so there was motorcycles sitting outside of the tree. Like if my house is, has like a circle, the staircase is in the middle. And so if you're in the kitchen, you can see directly in the front, more formal living area, which is where the big tree is at. And I had two motorcycles sitting there and a lot more presents out and everything. And so I was like, don't come in the kitchen. I'm going to go get my coffee. And then, hey, hey, CJ. Um, and all this stuff. So it was, you know, just one of those moments. And he comes into the kitchen. He's got his, he's like walking through the kitchen like this over to me to the coffee pot. He's like, I'm like, what are you doing? I told you not to, not to come into the kitchen. He's like, I just need to give you a hug, mom. I just need to give you a hug. I was like, no, you're not. You're trying to see in the front room. And he's like, no, like that. And of course he darts around and he's found the motorcycles and everything. But it was this very, very magical, very, very magical moment as April's sitting there, like a beautiful, magical moment. You know, and then he went and he got his little brother up and they come down the stairs and they're all like that, you know, and all the, just the magic, the excitement, but all the gift that was there in that, those precious, exhausting two hours from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. yesterday morning, I laid there and part of me was tripping out because Christmas was a day early and I'm like, this is so weird, but there's still this peacefulness. And I woke up again this morning now, you know, they're back at dad's house and stuff and all my older kids are in their own houses and off to other family and to do Christmas events this today there. And then everybody's kind of snoozing in my house right now. And we've got today is a day of projects around the house. I've got a bedroom that I'm putting together for my four year old and six year old. I've made a commitment that before the week is out, the bedroom is getting done. And so that when they get, get back here on Sunday, that everything is put together beautifully for them. And, you know, so it's like project day. There's events that I have to plan. There's all this, there's still work, but there is this beautiful stillness and peace in the air, you could say, in this season. And as I was waking up yesterday morning and even dealing with him and the magical moments of that, and then throughout the day, there was just this underlying current of presence and not the presence underneath the tree, but the presence of the day. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my take on it. But I felt just like this, like, like kind of, you know, like if you're watching one of those movies and everything starts to kind of slow down, like right before they hit impact, you know, and it goes, boom, like this. And it's like this slow moving. And I felt that slow movement come in. And what did my brother say? Merry Christmas, sis. Grateful to hear your voice on Christmas Day. <laughs> hey, I'll see you next week, love. We're headed out to their place, out to Tahoe. Um, but there was a slow movement of this, this like room that happened and it stayed consistent throughout the whole day. And with all the people and all the hustle and the bustle, the true gift of the season came through. And the gift was presence to be so so present in that moment but at the same time the gift of the witnessing of others and the witnessing of self and the witnessing of all this kind of stuff so, you know there was tons of gifts of all shapes and sizes and prices and varieties and everything the gratitude that was there the thought that had been put into each and every it wasn't random gifts that were given you know like everybody really tried to focus in and give gifts that really captured the other person that they were giving to. And there was this beauty in that. And, you know, and then it, it, this is, it really, truly was the presence. I'm like, <laughs> what am I trying to get through to you guys? I'm like, it is really, truly like the presence and the gift that we really need to take from this season that the majority of you, I hope, are getting to experience sometime today in your families is number one, the gift of family. And whatever that family might look like, you know, some of us don't have big families like mine, you know, seven kids and grandbabies and, and best friends and the extended that we have, that we have created or have just come into play through those that we, that we are our immediate families and then the extended family from that. But some of us just have us, some of us, you know, have us, but then there is family still. I believe that everybody out there, if they really think true and hard to it, has somebody that they love, that they cherish, and that they feel connected to in one fashion or form. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's maybe it's a lover, maybe it's a family member, maybe there's more than one. 
whatever that is, the relationship that we have with the people in our lives and the presence level that we can bring into those relationships. That's the gift that I believe to days like today, when we are stuck in these magical moments of gift giving and of the magic of the season, it brings that level, that peacefulness, that stillness, that presence level into that time and space. And if we can just captivate it and expand on it and bring that into tomorrow, the 26th, the 27th, the 28th, into 2020, imagine living 2020 with the presence level that you may experience in little moments today. What if you could experience more moments in 2020 like the little moments today when you just see somebody opening that gift that you put your heart and soul into and they just go, wow, thank you. Or when somebody embraces you and gives you a hug today, or you sit down at the table and you enjoy food with friends or family, or maybe you just walk outside to get away from it all. And then there's just this chill, this coolness in the air. Maybe you're in some balmy area and the sun just is radiating down. It just feels so good. And there's this moment where you just feel like, oh. Imagine having more moments like that in 2020. What would that do for your happiness, for your joy, for your lifestyle, for your ability to call in everything that you really truly want? Hey, morning, Patrick. What would it be like if you actually could just really call in those moments? You know, we can do this. We can do this. I used to live like in this mode of just, and I get plenty of hustle and bustle in my life and I have plenty of unpresent moments. So, you know, not saying that I'm perfect by any means, but I can tell you that the difference in my quality of life, sure, I make a hell of a lot more money than what I used to make. I set my own timeline, which I used to not be able to do eons ago, (laughs) eons ago talking like 18, 19, 20, because then I gave that shit up. But there was a lot more chaos. There was a lot more lack of presence in my life because I was caught up in the thought of the fear of tomorrow in the future and what could possibly go wrong or why things weren't exactly the way I wanted them to be today and the regret and the pain, the, you know, the, the lack of forgiveness, the blame, the victimhood, the suffering. And I was really caught in that for, for, you know, a good deal of my, of my adult years. And then over the last 15 years of my life, I just have decided that I was going to shift it. I was going to shift it. That was not making me happy. That was not making me the best mother. It was not making me the best partner. That wasn't making me the best daughter, the best sister, the best friend, the best coach, the best anything in my life. And it certainly was not making me the best me for me because I was depressed. There was a low grade depression for years, for years, this low grade depression. And I was just blaming and focusing in on all this stuff. And what it came down to was me. I had a choice to choose what I was focusing on. I had a choice to decide if I wanted happiness or if I wanted that low grade depression and that separation to never feel really connected, to never really feel, you know, in love with life and love for self, you know, never feel connected even to my children. There were times that I I worried, you know, like what's going to happen when my kids are all grown? Well, I, I, they're probably all going to run from me. They're all going to just run from me because I was so negative, so negative and so angry and so sad underneath all of it. So, so sad. But then I made a choice. I made a choice. I made a choice to be present. I made a choice to be grateful. I made a choice to focus on what, to focus on what I wanted instead of what I didn't want. I made a choice to actually command in my future by putting my attention on what I wanted instead of giving all my attention to my worry, my fear, the things that don't, 80% of them or more don't happen, you know? 
you know what happened? This funny, funny thing happened. With that presence in the moments and with the focus on, wow, my kid's being really cute or I'm really enjoying this moment talking to this person or I'm really enjoying doing this or doing that, whatever it is. When I put my attention on those little things, what ended up happening was my external world started to readjust itself to fit what I was already grateful for. What I was already grateful for. I had this massive amount of momentum going over here towards the negative. You know, I remember the days of hanging out with family and it being this, you know, just lots of drunken fiasco and anger and mess and just this like dread. And it's like, ah, ah, compared to yesterday's where, yeah, there was alcohol. Nobody got horribly drunk. There was good food. There was no stress on anything. We just kind of moved through. We just move through with ease and grace and love and gratitude and connection and support and just, yeah. Or that wasn't the case. And all it was was a change, a change of focus. <coughs> Excuse me. I ask you this Christmas beautiful Christmas here in Texas. Blue skies and sunshine and 68 degrees. I ask you this Christmas to think about what you're applying your attention to and to realize that the best gift that you can give yourself today is the gift that is worth your entire lifetime. It is the most powerful gift that your life can ever receive that your life can ever receive. It is also the best and most powerful gift that you can ever give to another person. That's the gift of your presence. The gift of you being right where you're at, right now. The gift of you just taking those little moments, those little snapshot moments, where it does just captivate you, that just make you, oh yeah, that was precious. That was beautiful. That was amazing. That really got me. That touched me. And allow yourself to feel it. Like, allow yourself to really, truly feel when you get touched. Instead of always blocking it. Instead of always hiding from it. Allow yourself to feel yourself getting touched. Emotionally deep. When you feel that connection. Don't deny it. Embrace it. Because at your core, you're wanting happiness. You're wanting connection. You're wanting positive, authentic relationship. You're wanting to feel. And more than likely, you've numbed yourself out through the years. And you've been hiding from all of that. So give yourself the gift of presence and the, the awareness of when you get touched at that level. Give yourself those two gifts. And I can tell you what, 2020 will be a completely different story if you can do that. And the gift of presence is just the awareness of what you're focusing in on. That's it. It's just the awareness of what you're focusing in on. And nobody else, no outside influence, no matter how it might look to your logical mind or appear in different ways, realize that your logical world is reacting to your internal world. So if you want that stuff to change, you want to feel whatever that fuck yes life is like for you, then what you need to do is work right here, right here, and become extremely present, extremely grateful. Allow yourself to really get in there and feel, catch the feels for the little moments, for the big moments, for whatever it is. And open yourself up to that. And watch 2020 blow your mind. Blow your mind because that's, it's going to be an amazing, amazing year. Allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to see it. Allow yourself to witness it. Allow yourself to really embody it. All of that comes from presence. And on that note, I'm going to go paint a bedroom. I'm going to go paint a bedroom, hang some dinosaur stuff up. I don't have to clean my house. Oh my God. You know, I know off the topic of presence, but actually caused from presence. Um, my 14 year old son, God bless him. I, I had to take an hour drive commute to drop my four year old and six year old off yesterday. So I had dinner like 80% done and I had everything where it just needed to be warmed up and everything. Just the Brussels sprouts needed to be done underneath the broiler. That was it. So it was like 15 minutes when I get back and dinner would be served. 
So I throw them in the car, take them to their daddy's house, and come back. Now, you have to understand that, you know, there's 13, 14, 15, 16 people. There's toys. There's boxes. The house was a chaotic mess. The downstairs was definitely, had been loved in a lot with all the toys and the paper and everything. And I had cleaned up throughout the day here and there. But there was a pretty good um, tornado of stuff that had gone everywhere. So you can just imagine. And everybody's, you know, talking and doing all this different stuff. And when I got back, I was thinking to myself, I am not my, I'm going to put my OCD in my back pocket and I'm not going to go into the house and try to clean right now. Instead, I'm going to be present with my family. I'm going to enjoy tonight. I'm going to really bask in my family experience, my family event and connect and just let it all go. Cause tomorrow my house is going to be dead silent and there's not going to be anything going on and I can get up at whatever time I get up and I can go and I can clean. It's not a big deal, right? The cleaning's not going to go anywhere, not going to go anywhere. So I had completely committed to that on my drive home. I was just like, cause it was just, I like, I like my kitchen clean. <laughs> I'm a pretty clean person. I just went, that's what I'm going to do. I walked in the door from the garage. I walked in the door and I just looked and the floors had been vacuumed and the floors had been, he was standing there and he was getting ready to sweep the entryway and all the trash had been taken out and all the toys had been put away where they needed to go. He even cleaned the kids' playroom, the boys' playroom, and he put the all their new stuff in there and organized it and put it all together. He did all of this. Like the kitchen was clean, the dishes were running, you know, everything was so... I was just like, I could have cried. I could have cried in that moment because the biggest weight in the moment that I would have woke up this morning with was a dirty house, was a dirty house. I was like, that was my big weight. And I was just like, I, was, and I had brushed it off. Like I'm going to deal with it tomorrow. Right? But the gift right there of the act of service was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you know why he did it? Because he was present enough to know how important that was to mom. He was present enough to really realize that, hey, this was this is this is one of those big ticket items that that mom's really gonna appreciate. And he's right. So I even thanked him this morning again as he was making his morning coffee. I was just like, thanks, babe, you know? Because that really was that was truly a gift. But he caught it because he was being present. He caught it because he was paying attention. And due to his ability to pay attention he knew what was important. He knew what was important to me. He knew how that would make me feel. And, and then he acted on it. And that's the gift of presence. Like when we, when we are present, when we are conscious, when we are aware, when we are paying attention, actively paying attention to the people in our lives, to the moments, to the experiences, we tend to get it right. You know, People say all the time, why does always all this stuff always happen to me? Why is all the bad stuff? I have the worst luck. I have this. Why does, you know, it never work out for me. I always have the worst timing, blah, 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 all this different stuff. And it's because you're not being present. When you're present, you have great timing. When you're present, you get the right gift. You get the right thing to do for somebody else. You show up at the right time. You say the right things. You can hold that space and you can really truly connect with somebody and you just know what to do because you're being present. Have I sold you yet on presence? I hope I have. I hope I've sold you. I hope I've given you something to think about. I hope that I've touched you in some way that as you go through the rest of today, with your friends, with your family, with whatever you've got going on and you're looking around and you have that inside of you that we all get, that you go, well, is this really that important? Am I being present right now with what matters? Or am I focused on the negative? Am I focused on the negative? I'm actually, am I, what am I creating right now? What am I creating? Because you're always creating, always, always, always creating. You are a creator. You are severe, strong as F. I'm trying not to cuss here, but you're strong as fuck. The manifester, okay? Your world is your world, and you have created it. So what are you creating? Today is a beautiful day to examine that. Today is a beautiful day to witness it. Today is a beautiful day to really, really tap in to what's going on. What's going on in these spaces and how it is actually appearing in your life. 
I hope you guys have had a beautiful Christmas morning or Christmas whatever, wherever you are at in this beautiful world of ours. I hope that you have a very present, blessed day and rest of the week. I will be on here tomorrow, though. So, of course, Conscious Coffee tomorrow. Um, rare day that I miss it. But I will catch you tomorrow with another one. As always, if I have said anything on here that has touched you, that has made you think of somebody, that has made you think, hey, that message needs to be heard, whether, you know, whatever it is, hit the share button, help Conscious Coffee get out there, keep spreading the word, keep touching people's lives. This is my give back to the best of my ability to teach some basic principles, but some deep principles that can change our lives, that can change our worlds, that can make everybody happier, more solid, more peaceful, more fulfilled, more connected, more authentic. So help me get those messages out. And of course, if you ever want to reach out to me about anything, reach out to me through message, private message, text, email. I don't care. Meet me at an event, however it is. I am here for you. I have lots of offerings going. Uh, we have until tomorrow for the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, crazy crazy, crazy sale that I'm doing. So make sure that you click on that. I'll make sure the link is in the comment sec section. My ninja is doing Christmas morning at her family's house this morning. So she is not on here right now to ninja it up for me. Oh, no. <laughs> so I will make sure that that goes on. I'll have to do it myself. Um, I will put that in the comments section here in just a second after I get off of here. So look for the promo. We have about 24 hours left on that it's 80% off of some of my best, best home study courses all bundled up for the holidays and it will be gone tomorrow and everything will be back at its regular price. So make sure that you grab it because I have something for all you absolutely amazing women out there, all you absolutely amazing men out there and for all of you entrepreneurs as well. Make sure to click on that in the comment section or go to my website at www.kendallwilliams.com and click on, on the menu bar where it says, it's like crazy, awesome Christmas bundle sale or something like that. I don't remember what I titled it, but, and then look for all the cool, amazing stuff that is coming out for 2020. I love you guys. Keep smiling. Have a very Merry Christmas filled with joy, filled with blessing. And remember to stop existing, start living, and I'll see you tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee.